Hi everyone, my name is Marie. I am the social worker at the Hope Cancer Center and I also oversee our art program. Um, I'm excited that you're here today. We have our holiday candle making class and we have our wonderful Jen Hi. from Late Candles. <laughs> Hi, um, thank you so much for having me here. Um, so today we are going to learn how to make a candle. And uh, what I'm gonna walk you through is just some of the basic uh, candle making steps. And also um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about how to create your own scents. So um, after today you can experiment and if this is something that was fun for you, then you can make it on your own. Um, okay, so I think our first step is to go over what is in your candle making kit. So um, you should have received a vessel. So this is our travel jar. It's my favorite jar. It's the perfect size. Um, and after you make this, then you could travel with it too and you can take it anywhere with you. Um, and you received the lid. And then you also received a safety label. So this goes at the bottom of the jar, and you received a wick, and then a sticky, and you received the wax. So it should come in a little pouch like this. So this has um, probably about five ounces of wax. This jar will hold about 3.8 ounces, so it's going to have a little bit more wax than you need. So if you have wax left over, don't worry at all. And you will also have received a fragrance oil. So uh, for the holiday uh, class, um, I created two scent blends. So you would have either received the winter forest or the cinnamon, the autumn. Um, so one, the cinnamon is really warm, so it has notes of cinnamon in it. It also has a little bit of the juniper and cypress. And then the winter forest has a little bit of eucalyptus and then also uh, Douglas fir in it too. So it's super holiday and very festive. Um, and then also what I wanted to say is um, if you have any essential oils at home, so it has to be oil based, you can definitely use it for the candle making class today. And if you don't have it with you, that's totally fine. We can use the fragrance today. And for the next time around, you can definitely experiment and blend your own favorite scents as well. Um, and then along with the kit, you should have received um, a label and also um, a heart sticker label. So these are just labels. If you wanna decorate your vessel, you can. Um, and you could do that, you could decorate that um, after the candle is set. So we can go through that as well. And uh, you also should have received a mixing stick too. So either you received a popsicle stick or a spoon. And you should have received a um, container. So this container comes with a lid. And this is, going to, um, this is going to be a great way to prepare the, the wick, uh, the wax, I mean. So this is a great way to use the, uh, prep the wax in a microwave. That is my best favorite way to prep the wax. Um, Traditionally, if you want to create, uh, use your own, um, create your own waxes at home, you could definitely um, use a double boiling method, uh, which means you would take, it, it's, it's almost like um, making chocolate, like melted mm -hmm. chocolate. So you, ha you can't really melt the wax over direct heat because that will burn it. Um, so the microwave technique is my favorite. And uh, what you do is you're gonna take your wax, so you're gonna open your wax and then you're gonna pour the wax in the container. So what I suggest is you can pour about half of the wax first. Um, and maybe I, can, maybe I can show them. Yeah, I can, sh I can show you um, how to prep it. Oh, I have scissors. Oh. <laughs> but um, you can tear it open. <laughs> So, so you just have the wax here, and then 
you can pour the wax in the container like so and then you can pour it to the top or I like to pour it um, halfway first that way I kind of make sure that the wax is fully melted and then you can add more um, so once you add the wax into the container like this then you put it in the microwave so what I like to do is you can actually use the lid in the microwave as well so you can put that on or if you want you can leave it off too um, and you're going to put it in for about 15 seconds at a time and so once you put it in the microwave at 15 seconds, you're gonna just give it a gentle stir. And then you're gonna stir it until the white wax turns completely liquid. If you have a thermometer at home, that's great, but you don't need a thermometer. But if you do, then um, just make sure that the wax is about 170 or 180 degrees. But again, if you don't have a thermometer, that's totally fine. You basically just need to melt the wax until it turns completely clear. Um, and just be mindful not to leave it in the microwave for too long. So just uh, 15 second uh, increments is perfect. Um, and you don't want to burn the wax. So how, how would you be able to tell if you burnt it or it's looking too hot? Is there a texture we're looking um, for? Or? Actually, there kind of is not a way to tell if it's too much. Um, so that's why what I recommend is if you don't have a thermometer mm -hmm. at home, just make sure that the wax is running clear. Mm -hmm. So um, what I did is I um, melted the wax ahead of time so Marie and I can have it to pour right mm -hmm. away. Um, so what I can show you is the consistency of what a melted wax looks like. Um, and then let me just do a quick temperature check here. And again, you don't have to have the temperature, but it's just a great way to just kind of see, um, uh, you know, the ideal temperature of it. And so uh, this is soy natural wax. So there are different types of waxes um, that have different types of textures and consistencies. Soy is one of my favorite waxes to work with because it's natural, um, it's biodegradable, and it also um, is really easy to clean up. So you can simply clean this up with warm soap water um, and you're not hurting the environment or anything. So that's why soy wax is my favorite. And it also is considered a lower melting point. So uh, soy wax will melt pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so when you put it in the microwave for about 15 to 30 seconds at a time, you'll notice that it'll start uh, melting. So yeah, this is about 140, which is totally fine um, because this is still really pourable. Mm -hmm. But ideally, yeah, if you want, you can get it all the way up to 170, 180. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll pour it actually in this container so you can kind of see the texture of it. And then I'll just kind of hold that up here so you can kind of see that. So already it's a little bit turning, um, it's turning a little bit opaque, so that means it's already starting to cure. Can and we, I think, can we oh, turn oh, yeah. it? So, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So you want to melt it until it gets more clear. This is a, this is already turning solid because it's so cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can prepare it in the microwave until it gets more clear. So clear is, yeah, so it's definitely going to be more clear than this. Okay. This is already like opaque. <laughs> okay, so I'll leave that here. Okay, um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead, oh, I have the wax in my container. So Marie, we will use you okay. as an example okay. to create the candle. So what we wanna do is we want to set the wick into the glass. Um, so you're gonna take the wick sticky and you're gonna peel it off. So this is double-sided. And then once you peel it off, I like to stick it onto the bottom of the wick first before applying it to the vessel. So once you do that, you can peel that right off. And then you're gonna stick it in the middle of your vessel. So um, you could do it different ways. So you can hold it up and then you can kind of place it right on the center here. Um, or you can put your vessel down and then you can place the uh, wick right onto it. So beware, this is very sticky. 
Um, so what I would suggest is just kind of gently dropping it in there. And then when you know that it's in the uh, center, then you can use your fingers, like what Marie's doing, and you could just press down on it. Okay. And if it's not completely centered, do not worry about it because once it sets, we're going to talk about how to set your wick centered correctly. Um, okay, perfect. So once you set that, now we are going to do the fun part. So we're going to blend the scent and then we're going to pour it into the vessel. Oh, we have perfect. a question? Yes. Okay. Where can they buy more soy wax? Oh, great question. Mm -hmm. um, so I am, I'm supposed to launch my candle making kit. So I will have that shortly, hopefully this year. If, if you can't find it on my website, then you can check anywhere. So Amazon um, also has a candle making kits, uh, but my favorite place to check is Etsy. So Etsy mm -hmm. is where uh, you can support a lot of this local and small business. Um, and a lot of these candle makers also provide uh, candle making kits as well. Okay. Oh, and yes. your website. Yes, and I will share this um, after, but my website is www.shoplay.com. So it's S H O P and then L A I T. L A I T. Perfect. So, um, okay, so let's get to it. Okay, okay. so what we're going to do is after your wax has fully melted, then you're going to add in your fragrance oils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the wax into your, okay. your mixing cup. And then, okay, do you know what kind of scents you want to do? Okay, well, you can't smell it through the screen, but it <laughs> smells so good in here. Um, but I really liked the cypress. Yes, so that okay. one's actually very similar to the winter forest. Okay, mm -hmm. and then the Santal? Yes, the okay. Santal is very okay. nice. It's like, uh, it has like a little bit of that cedar. Yes, so. And then what you can do too is before you create it into your wax, if you're not quite sure what the combination is, you can take a, you can take like a blotting strip or you can take a piece of paper or even just a little piece of a napkin and then you can blot some of the fragrance oils together and you can just smell it. Um, and that's a great way to just kind of see if you want to be bold and, and blend your own custom scent. But these fragrances are great on its own. Okay, so. So can I like. Yeah, you can do that. And yeah. Then and then you can blot the other one. Okay. Right on it. Yep. And then you can just kind of smell it under Okay. The I feel like I'm at a mall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, it's it's good. I really like it. It has like a mixture yeah. of sweet but a woody. Warm. Yeah, warm. I love the warmth of it. Mm. It's very holiday. Okay, we have another one. Can oh. you add color mm -hmm. to the candle? If so, what can you, you what can I use and where can I obtain it? You can definitely add color to candles, um, but you have to make sure that the the dyes are wax friendly. Um, so do not use like you, your food coloring um, that are you know for made for foods. Um, it has to be a certain texture. So it could either be a uh, a liquid form, but it's made for candle making. Um, and then you could also use uh, powders. So uh, lately it's been great because we've been seeing a lot of mineral powders that are very natural, and those also help uh, dye the candle. If you wanna do that, and if you do find um, a candle safe dye, uh, you can apply it right after you melt the wax. So as you're melting the wax, you can apply the dye before you apply the fragrance oils. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So now you have your fragrance ready to go. Okay. Perfect. And then I'm going to pour your wax okay. into your vessel or into your mixing cup. Okay. So it's about oh, like halfway. Yeah. yeah. So again, um, you have exactly about four to five ounces of the soy wax. So it might, um, and it was made just to cover your vessel. So it might be a little bit lower than Marie's because I poured, uh, I melted more of the wax today. So, okay. 
Okay, so now you're gonna put in your fragrance oils. Okay. So, um, so basically your vial will have about 0.4 to 0.5 ounces of fragrance oil in it. So that's how much will go into this one vessel. So um, when we use the droppers, so because I've done this so much, um, I know exactly how much <laughs> it has to be. So Marie, what I would suggest is I would squeeze about 10 dropfuls of this. So basically okay. squeeze the whole thing in. And then about, uh, you know, you could either do about 10 of these, mm -hmm. um, but again, you can kind of experiment. If you okay. want this to be the stronger note, then I would do more of this, the okay. Santal, mm -hmm. or if you want the Cypress to be more of the, the main note, then mm -hmm. you could do more of this, or okay. you could do it evenly. Okay, yeah. is it more like 20 drops for every certain amount of? Yeah, but it really depends because um, the droppers are all different. So mm -hmm. if you do want to candle make in the in the future, um, I would do an 8% to 10% ratio of your vessel. So again, we can kind of go through this in detail um, after the class, um, and I'm more than ex uh, happy to explain it for you. So if there's four ounces of wax in here, then you would calculate 8% um, to 10% of the fragrance oil. So that's kind of the ratio that I like to use. If you add too much fragrance oil, it could be, uh, you know, it might uh, risk being more flammable. It could actually mm -hmm. like make the candle wax burn a lot faster. So you can't enjoy it as much. Um, so yeah, so there are some troubleshooting um, tips over mm -hmm. there, but I can explain okay. that after. Yeah. All right. All right. So okay, we're gonna so add the I'm wax. gonna do 10 drops. For the, yeah. Okay. Is it? Yeah, squeeze the whole thing whole in. The whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Only because these droppers don't, they'll, they don't hold a lot of the fragrance oil in it. Okay. So, so like one drop already has this much, so. There we go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then what you want, and what you could do too is, um, so when the wax is melted, it's going to be a little bit more stronger. Once the wax cures, it's going to be a little bit more muted, but don't worry about that because that's just the nature of the wax and the oils together, and that's kind of the science of it. Once it cures and when you burn the candle, you smell the scent, and then um, the fragrance just cures the longer you let it cure in the wax, so. Okay, hey, was that 10? Yes, oh, that was 10. Okay, perfect. You can really smell it too. Mm -hmm. Is it also if the candle is too hot, then it affects the scent or it like can. the level? Yeah. So um, there's so there's just a very complex, um, interesting thing about candles is that there's so many different kinds of you know varieties of waxes, um, and there's a like a lot of varieties of fragrances that are. Uh, in today's candles, so that's why there's a lot of price points when it comes to candles, and there's a lot of you know different types of marketing where there's natural and there's um, you know perfumed candles that are petroleum based and paraffin based. Um, so the thing that I love with natural soy wax is that even though it's a little bit tricky to work with, it's also very easy to work with. So um, it's a little confusing, but basically it's. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit more forgiving. So when you are doing these uh, experimentations with the types of waxes and also the scents, it's a great way to kind of play on, play with it. And then also one of the most important things that I love about soy wax is after you use it, it's, uh, you, can, you can reuse the vessels. So it's washable. Um, yeah, so. I love that. It's smelling so good. Yeah, and then also give it like, like oh, like stir a good it. stir. Yeah, give it okay. a good stir because um, it's important that the wax and the oil is blending like mm. very uh, well and smoothly. Okay. So you want to kind of give it a really, really good, good stir. stir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I can really smell it. Yeah, it smells. Mm. Can't wait to light it. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so uh, just talking about candle curing. So this is what the candle looks like after that it cures. Um, so you're gonna probably see this candle turn from clear to white, like just how you are seeing it right now. 
Like you're gonna see that happen within a couple hours, especially because if it is a colder temperature lately, um, and then also this is a smaller vessel. Um, but ideally, if you can light your candle at least 24 hours uh, making it, then you're going to get like a really great uh, scent throw. So what that means is the longer you let the candle cure, and that means basically you let the wax and the, the uh, fragrance solidify for a few days, um, the better your scent throw. So. Okay. Okay, right. perfect. Yeah. Okay. Does it look like it's already blended? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So after um, you blend the wax and the fragrance oil together, okay, so kind of prep your area and then you'll have it right here. So one thing that I love about these cups is not only are they like biodegradable um, and they're eco-friendly, I like to give it a little pinch and then you kind of make this you kind of make mm. a little spout already. So you don't have to use all these different vessels uh, to create Perfect. it. Okay, so you ready to pour? Yes. Okay, so you're gonna pour. And then pour slowly. Oh, okay. Pouring slowly is better than pouring too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. And already it's kind of, you know, it's kind of curing already because again of the, the heat. Should so I if stop? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, what I recommend is stopping to the top right over here. You can fill it to the top if you'd like, but um, it leaves no room for the wick. So that's why I like to okay. pour it right to the, the, uh, the rim? Rim? rim of the jar. Okay, so you poured it. Perfect. Um, and then what you can do, so what I love about these jars is actually like after you're done, technically you shouldn't really move your vessel around. You should keep it in one place. Um, but these jars are actually great because you can kind of, you know, carry it and leave it in an area where it is undisturbed for at least 24 hours. Um, and then we're also going to talk about how to set the wick. So before the wax solidifies, it's important that you center and set the wick correctly. I, um, you might have received this, but you might have not. <laughs> and if you didn't, that's okay. Um, basically, uh, there are different materials that you can use to set wicks. So if you happen to have a clothespin at home, these are perfect. I personally love using chopsticks to setting all my candle wicks. They're the best, they're the most secure. And then also these, you can also find these online. They're basically wick sticks and they have like a little hole in it. So pick which one you wanna do. Um, I guess I'll try the chopsticks since okay. that's what you, you recommend. Do the chopstick. Okay. So what I do is basically leave a little slit open okay. and then you can slip this wick right into it and then and basically the purpose of having this is to make sure that the wick is, the wick is perfectly centered um, for while your candle is hardening. So just make sure that it's centered. Okay. And then um, it's important that the wick is centered correctly in the center of your vase. Um, because this is a way that the candle will burn correctly. So um, I'm sure that you've experienced times that when you're burning candles, there's like all this w wax on one side of the jar, um, mm. or you know you feel like it's kind of doing this tunneling thing. And tunneling means where the wick, the wax is just burning in the middle of the candle, and then there's all this wax on the side. So those are not ideal because it's not creating the the optimum. Uh, optimum like scent throw um, yeah. because it's wasting a lot of that wax on the side and also it could be because of the wicks um, it could be an incorrectly sized wick it could be that the wick is uncentered and if if there is an issue with the wick placement while the candle is burning you can easily fix that so um, you know when you're enjoying a candle and you notice that the wax is on one side after you blow out the candle and then the wax is still kind of soft you can gently tug on the wick and kind of correct the placement before it hardens again and before you enjoy it again mm -hmm. so there are 
troubleshooting tips. Um, and then another favorite thing that you know um, I always like to share is when there is a tunneling issue, um, you can actually wrap like a little piece of foil around the vessel. So you can wrap some foil and then leave the opening and you can like let the candle burn for a little bit and then you'll kind of see that the sides of the vessel will slowly melt down. Um, so that's like another good tip of like if you have like a tunneling candle. Mm. Um, but what I recommend is when you first light your candle, light it for at least a, a few hours because you want to make sure that um, the candle forms a correct memory pool and that means um, how the candle wax melts on the first burn is very important because if you were to light a candle and you li light it for a couple minutes and then it just melts in the middle of the candle, that will actually increase the chance of tunneling because you're not letting the candle fully uh, distribute throughout the entire vessel. So another reason why I love the travel jars is that if you are not going to be, you know, enjoying your candle for hours, you know, for two hours, three hours even, then these small candles are, are great because, you know, when, when I'm getting ready or if you want to take a quick bath or, you know, things like that, then you can light this candle and it's not going to take that long for it to yeah. kind of bath or down. Um, how, how long would this last? So great question. So um, because it's a soy wax candle, so these will burn for about 20 hours, 20 mm. to 30 hours. Yeah, if you, um, if you kind of burn it correctly. Um, and then what I mean by that is when you're burning the candle, avoid drafty places. So, you know, if there's air conditioning that's right around it or if it's like near a window uh, where there's a lot of drafts and breezes, that's not going to let the candle burn correctly because it's going to actually, you know, the, you'll notice that the flame is like going in crazy directions. <laughs> um, yeah. It's already hardening. I, I know. See it hardening. Yeah. yeah. And it smells so good. It, it smells, smells like really good. It smells like um like you're walking through the forest, but then you kind of go and see like a campfire or you know it, it, there's like yeah. that campfire woodsy scent to it. I love it. Perfect. So then I should not touch it. Leave it. Yes, okay. ideally. But if you, I mean, if you have to move it, just be very, very careful and just move okay. it carefully. And then if you have to relocate it, just double check the wick at all times. Um, if if I didn't include any of the wick uh, setting things, you can do different ways. Like you could even take like two chopsticks, or you can take like popsicle sticks and just kind of you know position it just like right on the vessel. So anything that just kind of helps create the, put the wick in the right direction, you can do that. So it's very, very easy. Um, and if you have any other questions, you know, yeah. please feel free to drop it in the chat box. Mm -hmm. So let and us know. And yeah, even after this class too, um, I can share my uh, social media, um, Instagram, um, so you can direct message me if you have any questions. Um, please share your candle. Um, I love that. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, any questions that you have. But um, that, I think that's yeah. it. Is there, <laughs> and then for the stickers? Oh, yes. So um, this you could place at the bottom of your candle. It's basically like a safety warning label, um, and it's not mandatory. I like to do it because it makes it feel like a, you know, like an actual candle. Yes. Um, especially if you want to gift it to somebody, it just makes it look very professional. Um, so this is just a safety candle label that just says, you know, keep away from pets and small children, and you know, just the. The basics. Yes, <laughs> babies. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and then oh, yeah. I think the wick. Oh, yeah. That, that makes question. such a big difference. So yeah. I want them to know about that. Yes. So this is a wick trimmer. Um, so after your candle sets, so as you can see, you have the excess wick right here. So after it's completely set, you want to trim the wick. Um, so trim it where it's probably about half, half an inch, I'd say. Uh, to be safe, you can do a trim about half an inch. And these are wick trimmers. So you can basically cut 
it, and it's very, very um, efficient. And I recommend this for if you are a candle lover. Um, these are great because after you burn a candle, sometimes you'll notice that there is um, a natural uh, occurrence of like mushrooming or suiting. Um, and the reason why is because I use all cotton uh, wicks. So these are lead-free wicks. and. Um, so one of the things is that naturally when cotton uh, mixes with the fragrance oils, it'll naturally kind of, you know, start uh, creating a little bit of the suit um, with, you know, with the, the combination of the wax and all of that burning. So when that happens, you just basically snip off the tip of the wick and then you can relight the candle and you're not going to have any of that suiting or black like smoke mm -hmm. that comes out. Um, yeah. So these are great. Mm -hmm. I love the wick trimmers. Um, I also have these on my site, and you can buy them anywhere, and they're called a wick trimmer. <laughs> they make a big difference. They I, do. I learned, I learned that trick from you. Oh, nice. Because it had, you know, my candle wicks were making that little yes. mushroom yeah. and that black, yeah. and then I had black flames, yeah. and I'm like, what's going on with yeah. my candle? <laughs> yeah, and that's very natural. Like, um, the reason why is because it's the cotton, just, it, like, everything's just kind of burning together, because at the end of the day, it is fire. It's like a miniature mm. fire that you're doing. So, um, yeah, so you can definitely use these wick trimmers. If you don't have a wick trimmer, you can use scissors and you could just snip the, the uh, wick, mm -hmm. wick um, that's perfect too. So Perfect, okay. Yeah. I think we have one last question. Um, what can you use to hold the wick at the bottom if you don't have the little oh, wick metal holder? Good question. Um, I always use the, the wick uh, tabs. So these are called wick tabs. So um, every time I purchase my wicks, I always have the little tab at the bottom because I think it's the easiest. I think that, hmm, I actually don't know how we would do that. What I, I think that um, what you might need to do is you might need to have some kind of Oh, so there are actually uh, places where they have um, separate wick tabs. So they're like a stand that's completely separated from the wick. And this is actually very natural because sometimes um, you can purchase these wicks like by the spool, like almost mm -hmm. like thread. Um, so yes, you can actually purchase like wick tabs um, or wick stands, and then you would place it at the bottom of the glass. Um, you can use an adhesive, and I always recommend that. And the reason why is because while the candle is burning, sometimes if the wax tends to be kind of melting towards the bottom, when you're almost done burning the candle, sometimes the wick can actually move. So it depends, like, if, if you're not burning it on an even surface, it'll naturally move. And that actually is a really big fire hazard mm -hmm. because, um, Sometimes like the wick can kind of, you know, start burning at the side of the glass and they can shatter the glass because again, this is glass, so. <laughs> um, so that's why I always like to have some kind of secure um, adhesive or a wick tab or a wick sticker or something at the bottom of the candle to really hold the wick down. Um, so yeah, I think that you can definitely buy uh, separate wick tabs uh, from, you know, Etsy, Amazon, um, I've been seeing a lot more candle suppliers um, online, so mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be an, a problem to mm -hmm. find anything. Perfect. Yeah. I think that's it, unless we have other questions in the chat box. Okay, we are good. Well, this is our last art class for the year, oh. so thank you so much for joining us through 2021. We have more coming in 2022, so please keep a lookout in your email for our January class. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye.